Hey, what's going on guys? CPC here. So today, or right now, I've got the first upload video. Um, I'm gonna do the second upload and I'm gonna go through my tackle bag. So I've got everything kind of laid out here, ready to go. Um, I need to get a new bag. Every one of my straps pretty much have broken. So um, I've got this thing way overweighted, I think. Um, First things first is that I have my boat registration, which looks like there was some oil or something out of one of these things that have um, leaked into my bag, but everything's still eligible. Um, so I keep boat registration in my bag. Um, I always carry a little headlamp with me uh, just in case while I'm out in the water, if it starts to get dark, this thing isn't super bright but when you're out on the water this little bit of brightness that this provides is usually enough to see so you can see there it's not very bright but it gives me enough to to be able to to get done what I need to get done and finish up I don't like fishing at night not to say that I haven't or I don't but I don't like to um, I have these really small pair of scissors. They're really convenient. You can stick them in your pocket or whatever, um, but they're good for cutting line and cutting off tags from uh, your lures instead of using your teeth. Um, so I like to keep that little pair. And next is just a little pair of um, kind of needle nose pliers with a lock down here. And these are good for getting hooks unstuck out, out of fish especially like trout and stuff when they like to swallow your hook um, so I like to keep a pair of those handy um, I've got this which I think typically would hold like a spray sunscreen or whatever I just have a couple bobbers I don't use bobbers hardly ever just throw them in there um, this is just sunscreen always have that I prefer the spray but I don't always have that on me um, so that's that's what I keep there um, so I keep all these on the side this here is just unscented off um, I'll use that if the mosquitoes are out but not too bad it works I like it but this is the good stuff this is the deep woods mosquito repellent always keep that on me I don't I can't stand mosquito bites stuff like that now um, I like to keep some Ziploc bags, uh, whether that's for plastics that I open and don't necessarily have a zip to keep them closed so they don't dry out and get yucky. Um, also, the occasional times when I catch and fillet some fish, I'll throw those in there, but I typically catch and release. So I like to keep those just handy just to have for whatever. Um, and then these are two scents. I'm not a big scent guy. I don't super believe in them, but these, I think I bought the Yum, but this other one was given to me. And I, I've caught fish while using them, but I don't feel necessarily that they make a difference. Um, but there are times when fishing a bend slow, and again, if I have a bait that's kind of dried out and kind of lost its touch I will throw some of this stuff on just to to give it a little bit more um, I don't know longevity or whatever but I don't necessarily believe that these work one way or another but I've got them so they're in there um, and I, I keep them in there so um, I need to put some new hooks on I pick up and Every lure that I find or whatever, I'll pick up and try to restore it if I can. And I just haven't got around to doing this one. Um, and I may not. I don't know. This may end up going to one of my kids or something. Take the hooks off and give it to them. You can see how jacked up it is. But anytime I find an accessible lure, I'll pick it up and I'll repaint it or something. I have my own airbrush kit and I'll, I'll go through that so uh, these are my trout baits this is all I've got I don't trout fish a whole lot 
So I just have a couple basic um, flavors, chartreuse, um, orange, another chartreuse that's already chunked up, and salmon eggs. So that's all I got. I know with these, I've had them for a couple years, they will dry out um, over time, but if you add a little bit of water and mix them up pretty good, they get real rubbery and stuff, um, almost spongy. But if you add a little bit of water to them, they usually come back pretty well. You just let it sit in there. And uh, I'll mix it up a little bit and put the lid back on tight. And usually they're good to go the next time I want to use them. So there ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, so next is my bag of terminal tackle hooks and so I keep all of that in a ziplock bag so that way when I want to use it I just pull out the ziplock bag and it's easy to find I've got my little panfish hooks I've got an empty bag um, these are all the replacement hooks from my um, crankbaits and stuff like that when I want to change out I've got several different sizes treble hooks that I can easily change those out. Here's some offset shanks, um, still leader for the few times I go pike fishing, which isn't very often. Here's some smaller ones, uh, treble hooks that I'll use for trout fishing. Uh, just an assortment of hooks. Mostly use those for like bluegill and stuff like that. Uh, some swivels uh, for when I want to tie on a leader. Um, you know, I got some shaky heads, stuff like that. Good, good hooks are these mustads. Mustads are real strong, good hooks. Um, got some swim bait hooks, and just just an assortment of different things. I mean, you want to have them for different presentation. Here's some jig hooks. They've got that weighted head in there um, for tubes and stuff like that. So. I keep those all in one bag and that way when I go to change hooks or whatever I just pull out that one bag instead of trying to look through all of those different things to be able to find that one hook that I want. Um, so and then I keep that all just in this front storage right there. Also what I keep in there, I've got a 50 pound scale. Got a couple different extra lines. Um, this stuff, uh, I'm not even gonna put that back in there. I don't use it. Um, Red Label Seaguar 12 pound. This stuff is great floral carbon. I love using it. It's very strong, very reliable. Um, the memory on it's great. Um, just, just a good around line. Uh, Red Gar. Our Seaguar Red Label, so check that out for for fluorocarbon. Um, this is um, Omniflex Zepco garbage. <laughs> it's 30 pound test um, monofilament. I just bought it to to fill one of my backfill one of my spools, but it has terrible memory and everything. It's uh, it's cheap. I think for 30 pounds, 250 yards, I think I only paid like five bucks or something, where that other line probably cost me closer to 20, 30 bucks. Um, and then I've got some 50 pound braid. Um, as I explained in one of my other videos, use that for frogs and stuff like that. So um, Power Pro is they're decent they're they're pretty good i mean most places you go will carry power pro um for my monofilament i i like uh the seaguar uh or for my fluorocarbon i like the seaguar red label that's really good um seaguar makes good stuff high seas makes some good stuff okay so my next bag is weights so i've got all my egg weights, all my split shots, all my drop shots, all that kind of stuff 
um, is all mixed in here. So, um, so with these I'll use for Carolina wit rig um, bullet weights. Got egg weights in there, split shots. Um, these are for like a Carolina rig. These are the glass beads. Um, I've got a bunch of my um, steel leaders in here for pike. Um, more split shots, a stringer, uh, some drop shot weights in there. Those are made a friend of my brother's. I don't know who exactly made them. Um, these are just some willow blades that I got off eBay, I think, for um, my Alabama rig. Here in Arizona, you're only allowed to have two hooks per line. And so the Alabama rig here, I'll show you how I've got it hooked up, but you can't legally throw that with uh, all of your swim baits on there. And so what I had to do was take some of those willow blades and put it on there in order to make it legal here in Arizona. Um, you can put false baits on there without any um, hooks, but I think it was easier to just do it in that manner. So the next thing I'm going to go into is all my soft plastics. And so the way I have these is like my crawfish and um, my Helgramite type things. I've got worms and then I've got swim baits. So each one has their own little um, Ziploc. So again, I can pull them out and I can easily go through and find what I'm looking for. So these are some Fatty Craw uh, Havocs. They're just crawfish. Some tubes, Strike Team, Strike King tubes. I showed you those tube hooks that I use. Some more um, craws. These are usually thrown on um, a jig. Oh, I've got some bigger jigs that I'll take and throw these on. Um, these are some beaver tails. These are some yum craws. A different color of yum craws. These are some smaller um, chigger craws. And some more tubes. So those are some of them plastics those are like just the um, non-typical soft plastics that I use okay next I'm gonna go into my swim baits and show you what I've got in that area so um, that's just a storm. Uh, I think that's like a six inch, um, five inch swim bait. Throw that. Um, okay, don't judge me. When I first got into fishing, banjo minnow was the greatest commercial of all time. And I bought some banjo minnows. And I have actually caught fish on them. Um, not a ton of them, but some banjo minnows more banjo minnows and more um, so yeah I've, I've got those get all those out of the way several different colors of them okay so now these are yum uh, swim baits and I can throw these either single or I can throw them as um, on the, the umbrella rig Mom. and so there's like a shag color a trout color this is supposed to be bluegill color um, I don't remember what this is called but it's white um, and then here, these are 
little br green pumpkin brush hog um, lizards. So those can be done Carolina rigged or you can do them. Um, um, oh, I can't even remember what it's called. But anyways, those are soft classic. Another swim baits, some flukes in there. And those are all dry. So those are done. Hey, no, stop it now. No, stop it. No, I know she's awake, but you need to stop. Okay, so that's it for, for the swim bait bag. Um, that's going to go go back in. Um, next, we will get into my worm bag and other soft plastics. So. Lexi, can you get her out without hurting her? Okay, so this is this is the worm bag. This is um, like your Senkos and stuff like that. I've got some custom ones in here, like this. I couldn't remember the guy's name. I wrote Dude's Homemade. But these are some uh, custom poured plastics that I've used and are pretty good. I don't know what he's ba uh, flavored them with, but they work. I caught, caught some good fish off of them. Um, can't go wrong with Morning Dawn Robo Worm. Uh, there's only two in this bag, but I love that Morning Dawn Robo Worm. Those are great. Um, so these are just stickos. Um, different people call them different things, um, Senkos, Stickos, whatever you want to call them. Hi baby! Um, here's another one that one of my other buddy or guy off Facebook gave, uh, the DB4L Denver Broncos for life. Those are great too. Got some off of that. So, um, I need you to take her out of my stuff. Take her over there. So, um, these are some 10 inch pumpkin green that I bought thinking, I don't know. I don't even know. I've never caught anything off of them. Honestly, I don't even know if I've ever used these, but they're 10 inch. I know they're great for the winter, uh, slower times of the season. Um, this is just a Ziploc bag of a bunch of random plastics from one of those uh, plastic things that you buy at Walmart that just has an assortment in it. And that's all this is. It's just a big, there's some little swim baits in it. There's worms, there's uh, senkos, there's lizards, just a bunch of random stuff. Okay, so now here are some different senkos that I've got just in different colors. These are all Senkos, different colors, black and blue. This is like a pumpkin green. This is like a charcoal gray. Um, this is another green. I don't even know what kind it is. Um, there's some of those um, Robo worms. Again, these are probably my favorite to throw. Your basic power bait worms. Some more of the guys' uh, customs that he sent me. Um, some power bait curly tail pumpkin seeds. Um, real basic Walmart stuff there. Here's some uh, twin tail grubs that I'll use. That's what I had tied on the ultralight. Um, those are good for smaller little ponds and stuff like that real basic um, and then here's some finesse worms uh, green pumpkin another great one can you get her away from the door alexis go in your bedroom okay, so that does it for 
the plastics that I've got. Um, I think at this point, thanks to one of our guys on Easy Anglers, that my daughter has more and better plastics than I have. So, that is that. So next, what I'll go into is my um, my hard baits and my top waters and my jerk baits and my crank baits and all that stuff will be the next little segment. Okay, okay guys, so I'm going to move on to my um, assortment of tackle, spinner baits, jigs, stuff like that. And I'll show you a little bit about um, each one. I showed you my setups and what I use and why I use those. Um, so with that, my first box is not completely sorted out the way I normally have most of these. Um, I have them all labeled across the front, as you can see, except for this one, because this one's a little more random. Um, but for the most part, what I do have in here are jigs. And so um, these are jig heads that my brother makes. He pours them um, and then paints them and ties them and everything. So I get those from him. And these I would use like those beavers um, on here, handler mites, stuff like that on the smaller ones. And so I've got a couple different colors of those. Um, some of the heads are painted black. Some of them are this brown uh, spotted color but most of them are all black and red um, that he's got for me here so um, I've got a couple different spoons here one's like a trout one's red and white and the rest are all just a silver to kind of imitate a trout um, use those spoons as like a drop um, kind of just jigging up and down um, I have a couple different types of spinner baits. Some of these are those real cheap one dollar ones at Walmart and some of them are tied that my brother did. So I've got a couple different ones uh, spinner baits set up in here. Um, so like I said this this particular box is a little more random than my, the rest of my boxes but my bag can only fit uh, six boxes it fits five this way and then one on top um, so that is the first of the boxes um, the rest are all labeled so Next is rattle traps, jerk baits, square bills, poppers, and this is just painter tape with um, using just a permanent marker, and it makes things a lot easier when you're in your bag, when you've got a big bag like this, to find what you're looking for. Now, in between changing baits, sometimes I just throw them in the box, so it may not all be rattle trap, jerk baits, square bills. That comes to a time when I. Um, I go through and I organize tackle box. Women go crazy over men who sit there for hours uh, organizing tackle boxes. Well, this is why. It's because we change baits and just throw them in any box. So, as you can see, here's a spinner bait. That should be in that last box. Um, so, here are a couple just Walmart trout jerk baits. Bigger one and a smaller one. Um, I, I like them. I mean, they're, they're pretty good. This one is, I don't remember, it's a River to Seas, I think, uh, jerkbait. That's a real good jerkbait tied in with a, a spinner that shouldn't be in there. Um, and so we've got a smaller jerkbait for when... It's a smaller lake. Those bigger jerk baits will catch them, but 
these are just for when they're not committing to the bite I can switch over to something a little bit smaller if they're following it here's another one of those little baits that I just found a little swim bait never thrown it never used it but again I pick stuff up when I see so now here's one of my blanks this one is one that I bought and then I in turn used my airbrush to go ahead and I painted it myself and then clear coated it and what have you so a little silent um, square square bill um, fat papa I think is what it's called so I used my airbrush to, to paint that and I'm I like the way it turned out um, I've got a popper in here uh, which you know, is, is good here's another one of those um, jerk baits these are expensive jerk baits that my brother gave to me um, I really like them I've had good success on them um, there's a spook that I painted tried to imitate a trout um, I haven't caught anything on it yet but it's also not the right time of year I painted that not too long ago but it just hasn't been the right time of the year yet either um, white popper with a red lip uh, mouth um, so that's that's good top water there um, then I've got a couple more rattle traps these are good winter baits with the rattle in them they just dive down got some good motion to them so I like to throw those during the winter here's another fat papa square bill like a bluegill that I painted um, I've caught several off of this one as well as that other one that I've painted um, so they seem to like those again they've got no rattle in them but they seem to work so I enjoy using that airbrush to paint my own lures um, there's just another flat little uh, uh, I don't even remember what this one's called but it's a little crankbait has a small bill I painted this one as well um, just kind of like a gold bottom silver with a black top um, there's another one that I did um, wanting to come unstuck so here's another one I painted the green back and then a greenish yellow um, side and then a purple and a gold finish on the bottom um, I can't remember if I've caught anything off this one or not but yeah looks like my There you go. So um, there's that one. I, I think I've caught something off this one, but I can't remember for sure. Okay, so little little uh, small square bill. This is one that I found. This is one that I found that I haven't thrown or used yet that um, I've got. This I think came in a pack of several different lures. There's a little bit of rust on it. Haven't even thrown that one. Same thing with this one. Haven't thrown this one. Came in a pack with a couple other ones. This is a man's I think is what it's called I've thrown it but never caught anything off of it um, I can't remember the name of the color but man's is the one that makes that uh, found this one never thrown it so a lot of these I've just picked up Now this one is a Ashari I think is the brand Ashari is uh, yeah right there uh, three inch square bill Ashari made by storm these are supposed to be really highly rated. I've caught a couple off of this one. Just a shag color, nothing uh, too exciting, but they have great action and they, they work pretty well. So um, that is 
box number two. Um, let's see. Next, I will go into this one. I've got my frogs, my A-rig, chatterbaits, stuff like that. Some of the stuff's torn up, so I love throwing frogs. Love it. So a lot of these frogs will get, and they've got the real long skirts, and you can see like this one. Look at the difference in that skirt length. Okay, a lot of times fish will hit the back and they'll miss those hooks because of those long skirts. Plus it doesn't, it takes away from the action. So a lot of times we'll cut that, um, that skirt down to make it a little bit smaller to make a shorter bite and have a better hookup. So you can tell I've never thrown this one just because of how long that skirt is. But like that one, it'll go out and those legs just kind of spread and it looks really nice. Um, there's another one I haven't thrown. Uh, black one. A lot of these I haven't thrown. I love throwing frogs, but I usually go with this one. I had another one, but I think I lost it. I think it was black also. So um okay so here's my a rig that i have that i was showing earlier of the blades where we're only allowed two hooks per line in arizona so i replaced those hooks i have this little um twist tie on here i just slide that up and down when i want to use it i slide it to the top it separates all those and then it's ready to be thrown um, So here in Arizona, you can only have two hooks. So I've got that middle one, which is the farthest back because it's the longest trailer, and then that bottom one. So when it swims, it swims like this because fish typically strike from the bottom. So it actually swims like this. And so the bottom right is where I've got that one. And then the longer trailer in the middle, I've got that second one. And the rest of these just provide flash so in other states you can have this rigged up in such a way that all five of them have hooks on them but in arizona you're only allowed two hooks um, so that's why it's set up the way that is all right so um little chatterbait this is another one that my brother made um, throw that every once in a while if the conditions are right a uh, little spin I don't even know what this is this is called but it's just a little spinner I found that one trout lure obviously here's a storm um, this is a swim bait never caught anything off of any of those uh, a couple spinner baits that i've got on here here's a couple uh chatter baits that lost their skirts that i need to get replaced and another spinner bait so that's it for for that box and then next is gonna be just some crankbaits with my wiggle warts. Wiggle warts are my favorite type of crankbait to throw, which is this type here. This is a Fire Tiger. Um, Storm makes these. In my opinion, these are one of the best uh, and cheapest to throw. I've always had really good luck with these. This is called like Phantom, I think. This is Fire Tiger. This is one of my first baits that I made. Um, out of balsa wood and the weighting is off on it so it's <laughs> it's cool looking but it's not practical because it kind of floats like this made out of balsa wood there's not enough weight in the belly but um, this is one I stripped down and repainted um, that was when I was first learning just used a marker to finish up uh, trying to imitate like a trout or something but painted that um, 
here's another one my daughter chose the colors for Christmas colors never got anything it doesn't even have hooks I don't even think I've thrown it but when I went to clear coat it my epoxy was setting super fast so the layering on this is really thick and just yeah not practical um, these are pretty cool these are rebel big craws and I actually caught the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life off of one of these um, it's just a deep diving crankbait that looks like a crawfish they come in different colors I have several different colors in my other box um, of those so those are really neat to throw um, a couple jointed um, crankbaits different colors two two craws this one's like a bass so those are fun another little one that I found this one's lip broke off so I don't even know why I still have it and then just another ugly one that I found so obviously these ones that I've found mostly I don't throw them often or at all so this has most of my rebel craws um, there's a big big crank uh, I think this is another one that came in that assortment from Bass Pro Shop. Um, I don't think I've caught anything off that. Uh, these two came out of that cheap box also at Bass Pro Shop. Haven't caught anything off those. That's a little bomber. And a craw that I found. Haven't even used it. Um, I've got my go-to baits and I, I stick with those. Um, this is another little bomber. Um, so these are these are the rebel craws that I've got some different colors these are the little craws they're like a green color a bomber um, I've never thrown that one D cherry may or may not be good and just your big cranks so yeah, I don't throw a lot out of that box right there. Um, if the conditions are right, I'll throw some of those crawfish. But I typically don't use that box very often. So, moving on. This is a shad box. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different sizes I mean they're mostly pretty big um, a lot of these are painted by uh, a buddy of my brother's this is another box from him that I got you've got all kinds of different colors in here I mean some of these are crazy but you know he's caught them this is modeled after a craw but has some insane amount of paint and sparkle to it I'm sure it works though. I mean, he's he's used them. They're confident baits for him. And, um, he just has a bunch of them, so he gave me some of them. Uh, you can see how much glitter is in some of these. And I mean, I guess if your conditions are real cloudy and stuff like that, this would be would be good if they're the water clarity is not good, but maybe you have some sun out or something like that. So. Um, that's that's pretty much it I mean so you got my my fishing arsenal that I've got you've got my um, rod and reel setups that I utilize and then you've got my tackle that I go through um, I have a feeling this video is not gonna be you know one of my videos that's real up there as far as quality and stuff like that obviously there was a lot of interruptions and stuff but it's a good look at the gear that i use and for someone who's been fishing for a couple years i've built this collection up over the years through either gifts or just buying and then you're gonna lose a lot of gear especially those who are new to fishing you're gonna go out you're going to get snagged up you're not gonna be able to get it unstuck and you're just gonna have to break off um, so with the combination between my soft plastics between my hard baits stuff like that 
typically I can go out and I can find the conditions that are right and I can find some fish and be able to get on them and catch them. Um, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you go out there um, and you just cannot figure out the pattern and sometimes they just simply aren't biting and it's that easy. Um, a good fisherman will go out and be able to kind of figure things out and figure out structure and stuff like that what they're biting and get a reaction bite but that's not always the case um, if you ask anybody who has a fishing show they can tell you how many times they've gone out and fished and just had nothing and had to film more so with that being said uh, have any qu questions um, go ahead and comment below um, I, I want people to be interactive I want people to watch I want people to learn if you think that the video wasn't informative enough um, if you think that there's certain things you'd want to learn more about um, about how to throw a specific bait or um, lure or something like that uh, technique and stuff I'll do my best to try to answer your questions and try to make another video to accommodate how to do that and in the future I will do that according to the time of the year and the season and everything and when it's appropriate so I'd like to come out with like a, an exclusive frog fishing video and an exclusive jerkbait fishing video exclusive drop shotting video exclusive crank video I think you guys get the point I'd like to accommodate that and I'd like to do that but until conditions and stuff are right um, I just want to continue to upload um, different types of videos that will help individuals um, who aren't so sure or confident about their fishing to become more confident. Everybody has confident baits that they know without a doubt they can go out there and they can catch a fish. Um, it may not be the size, it may not be the numbers, but they know on that one bait that they can go out there and catch it. I've got my personal lake um, that I go to. It's not my personal lake, but it's my favorite lake. And I go out there with some wiggle wart, um, little crankbaits, and I know that I can go to that lake and catch fish. And it may not be a big fish, but I know that I can catch fish because I've never been skunked there. I've never gone there and drawn a goose egg. I've always every time caught a fish there because I know the structure I know the patterns of the fish I know their feeding habits and stuff like that and I've just been able there to go there and become uh, successful and um, I think if individuals can learn how to do that and learn what works what doesn't where that if you're feeling down and confident because the last four times you've gone fishing you haven't caught anything um, I think you can always turn back to that confidence bait or that um, confidence area and go fish that lake and bring that confidence back up. Again, we're in this, I'm in this, to spread my passion for fishing and to be able to teach people how to fish um, who want to get into the sport. And so if, if you're a seasoned uh individual when it comes to fishing or if you're brand new to fishing um, if there's stuff that you think should be included in further videos um, go ahead and leave me a comment below and I'll try to incorporate that in my next video um, like subscribe comment I can't tell you enough how important that is for somebody who is trying to grow a YouTube channel like myself um, because the more comments and activity, subscriptions, liking, the more we can get from that, the more that this type of video feed will show up at the top. So those who are getting into it for the new first time um, can find those videos and be able to, to, uh, to see them so they can learn more. Um, so if you guys don't mind doing that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, again, let me know what you'd like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see more, and we'll get that uh, included in our next video. So until then, 
Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you later.